Sure, it's creepy enough that Sting sang about watching every step his ex takes, but that was just a song. Turns out, Rupert Murdoch actually did it, and it's only one of the weird skeletons in the family's closet. Rupert Murdoch may have been over the moon when he acquired the UK tabloid News of the World in 1968, but the publication that had been running for over a century eventually came to an end under his watch. News of the World's ethical practices came under fire in November 2005 when it published an article about Prince William's knee injury and later his interaction with ITV's Tom Bradby over broadcasting equipment. Since the prince's life happenings were only known to a small circle, this suggested some sort of nefarious surveillance. Eventually, after an investigation, royal editor Clive Goodman was handed a four-month jail sentence in January 2007 on a phone hacking charge. More allegations of breach of privacy by the tabloid would resurface later. According to The Guardian, the publication's journalists collaborated with a private investigator to capture ex-chief executive of the Professional Footballers Association Gordon Taylor's private messages. In another incident, News of the World reporters allegedly tapped into the phone of slain student Millie Dowler upon her March 2002 disappearance, which prompted her parents to think she was alive. As a result of accusations against the Murdoch-owned publication, Rupert appeared before the British Parliament alongside his son, James Murdoch, who offered a public apology. Rupert would also make an unlikely declaration. I would just like to say one sentence. This is the most humble day of my life. In July 2011, news of the world went out of business. Although the Murdoch family shows up for each other, as James Murdoch did when his father was facing problems with news of the world, they don't always see eye to eye. In 2005, Rupert Murdoch was said to have been alienated and isolated from his older kids amidst a fight over the family trust, per the Wall Street Journal. Speaking in an interview with The New Yorker years later, James shared that he and his father weren't entirely on talking terms all the time. In the book, The Man Who Owns the News, Inside the Secret World of Rupert Murdoch, Rupert's daughter, Elizabeth Murdoch, pointed out that her father had created a turbulent emotional dynamic, one which his children were fortunately well-equipped to weather. She told author Michael Wolf, He still falls into stupid old habits. I mean, he's impossible to figure. He's weirdly awkward about things, but his heart is in the right place. He's very old-fashioned. He finds it hard to talk about emotions, Hard to say if somebody doesn't know it. He'll say sorry if you call him on it, but he walks straight into it. In his 2014 release, The Loudest Voice in the Room, how the brilliant, bombastic Roger Ailes built Fox News and divided a country. Author Gabriel Sherman brought to light the behind-the-scenes inappropriate behavior of the then Fox News head. Two years after the book was published, ex-Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson took Ailes to court for offensive sexual advances. Her boldness prompted other women, including journalist Megyn Kelly, to come out publicly with similar accusations against Ailes. The infamous scandal inspired the 2019 flick Bombshell. It's like we're telling women, go on, speak up for yourself, just know the entire network is with Roger. Ailes eventually exited his role. So did commentator Bill O'Reilly under similar circumstances in April 2017. After numerous reported settlements, Murdoch appeared to dismiss impropriety in his company in a conversation with Sky News. He claimed, It's all nonsense. There was a problem with our chief executive, sort of, over the years, but isolated incidents. As soon as we investigated it, he was out of the place in hours. Well, three or four days. And there's been nothing else since then. Reactions from Fox News women via HuffPost claimed he was negligent of his female employees' well-being. However, Murdoch's representative told the publication his words had been misconstrued. He said, He responded negatively to the suggestion that sexual harassment issues were an obstacle to the company's bid for the rest of Sky. The love story between Rupert Murdoch and Scottish writer Anna Maria Torf began in a setting both were familiar with. She was a journalist, and he was on the interviewee's seat. Three children later, the house that the couple had built for a little over three decades crumbled when someone else caught Murdoch's eye, his would-be third wife, Wendy Dang. While Anna wanted to remain married, Murdoch wasn't willing to give it another try. Anna explained in an interview with the Australian Women's Weekly, I think that Rupert's affair with Wendy Dang, it's not an original plot. 
was the end of the marriage. I don't want to get too personal about this, but he was extremely hard, ruthless, and determined that he was going to go through with this, no matter what I wanted or what I was trying to do to save the marriage. Parting with News Corp afterward wasn't something Anna wanted to do either, but her circumstances called for a resignation. On the day she said her goodbyes to the board, Anna agreed to go on a date with William Mann, a widower. They walked down the aisle a year later and stayed together until his death in 2017. She would later marry Ashton DePaster in 2019. According to the New York Times, Rupert Murdoch's sons didn't approve of his relationship with Wendy Dang from the get-go. They even reportedly tried to change his mind about marrying the producer over dinner one evening. Nonetheless, he tied the knot anyway and stayed with Dang for 14 years. Unsurprisingly, there was no love lost between Dang and the Murdoch sons as the years went by. The couple had two children during that time, Grace and Chloe Murdoch. In a twist of fate, the ending of Dang and Rupert's marriage had a familiar script, that of alleged infidelity. According to Rupert's conversation with Fortune, everyone but him was privy to Dang's supposed extramarital affairs. As soon as he got wind of the details, a divorce was inevitable. Vanity Fair got a hold of Dang's alleged diary entries, which showed she was seemingly smitten by her daughter Grace's godfather, former United Kingdom Prime Minister Tony Blair, in addition to having relationships with supposed lovers like MySpace co-founder Krista Wolf. Asked about his reaction to those entries, Rupert told Fortune, I was shocked, but I didn't read them and I was not given them until after I had filed for divorce. Ying Shushu was a Chinese tutor for Grace and Chloe Murdoch and had often traveled with the family. Her time working for the Murdochs came to an end when she injured her knee in a home accident, which rendered her unemployable. Although Shu reportedly tried to sue the Murdochs after her dismissal, the court ruled in their favor. Working under Dang apparently wasn't a walk in the park, as she shared in an interview with Gawker. She told the publication, Everyone who works for her hates her and is scared of her. When she's there, it's like a war zone. Shu also alleged that she had to work extra hours with no perks. Additionally, Dang supposedly had frequent flare-ups targeted at her staff and would blow small mistakes out of proportion. In response to her allegations, the Murdochs issued a statement that hinted that Shu was out for vengeance. It read, in part, Having failed in court, she has apparently turned to the media with unfounded and untrue accusations. We will not dignify them with comment. Shu's assertions, however, were not far from other accounts that trickled in. After saying that Dang wasn't very nice to her husband, an acquaintance also claimed that they witnessed her publicly berating Murdoch at dinner shortly after they got married. Long before the couple divorced, they allegedly led independent lives. According to the New York Times, not only were James and Lachlan Murdoch butting heads over who would take control of Rupert Murdoch's businesses, but also their childhood home. The 8,651-square-foot Beverly Hills mansion where they grew up had been purchased by Rupert Murdoch back in the 80s. Rupert reportedly acquired the former Stein home for $7 million in September 1986, a little over two years after the death of Doris Stein, Music Corporation of America co-founder Dr. Jules Stein's wife. In a note to its designer Wallace Neff's son at the time, Rupert unveiled his and his wife's intention to revamp the property. According to the Los Angeles Times, he wrote, My wife and I are extremely excited about it, and we plan to make it even more as your late father intended. He eventually listed the house for sale years later, a move that his sons frowned upon, as the New York Times observed. Although Rupert apparently found a potential buyer in actor Leonardo DiCaprio, the mogul's son, James, bought it for a reported $30 million in 2015. God damn it! In April 2000, Rupert Murdoch got an unfortunate prostate cancer prognosis. Murdoch's representative released a statement, which read, His doctors have told Mr. Murdoch the prognosis is very good and that it is an extremely low-grade form of cancer. He has no intention of changing his work schedule. It was further revealed that Murdoch would be receiving weeks-long radiotherapy care in order to help with restoration of his health. By August of the same year, Murdoch was clear of any potentially cancerous cells. According to The Independent, he jokingly said of the treatment process, It convinced me of my own immortality. He went on to add that his heading of News Corp at the time wasn't shaken at all. 
In his chat with Fortune 14 years later, Murdoch affirmed that he had received a clean bill of health from his physicians. He also let the publication know how long he thought he was going to be alive. He remarked, Well, my mother just died at 103, so that's a start. You should live 20 years longer than your parents. In March 2016, Rupert Murdoch and Jerry Hall said I do in an intimate London wedding. An excited Murdoch took to X, formerly known as Twitter, to express his joy. He wrote, No more tweets for 10 days or ever. Feel like the luckiest and happiest man in the world. In August 2022, Murdoch and Hall reportedly went their separate ways. Just like his detachment from Wendy Dang, the ending of his fourth marriage to Hall was sudden. Hall was apparently expecting a meeting with Murdoch at their home in England when she reportedly received the unfortunate news through an email. According to a screenshot shared with Vanity Fair, it read, in part, Jerry, sadly I've decided to call an end to our marriage. We have certainly had some good times, but I have much to do. My New York lawyer will be contacting yours immediately. Besides conflicting opinions on abortion, as well as COVID-era masks and tests, Hall and Murdoch were said to have had no marriage-ending arguments. Nonetheless, it seems Murdoch had a change of heart in more ways than one. The abrupt nature of Murdoch's decision wasn't the only confounding thing about the split. Not long after Hall settled into the England home she received as part of the divorce settlement, she discovered that her movements were allegedly being monitored. It apparently took the efforts of Hall's famous ex, Mick Jagger, along with his security guy, to disengage surveillance cameras, according to Vanity Fair. Barely a year after Murdoch and Hall had finalized their divorce, he gave Cupid yet another try. He'd fallen head over heels in love with Anne Leslie Smith, an ex-dental practitioner turned on-air personality. Murdoch and Smith were set to tie the knot in the summer of 2023 in what would have been his fifth marriage. He proposed on St. Patrick's Day in March 2023, in line with his part Irish background. The media mogul told the New York Post, I was very nervous. I dreaded falling in love. But I knew this would be my last. It better be. I'm happy. Of course, his ring of choice didn't come cheap. According to the Daily Mail, the value of the 11-carat rock Smith was spotted with at LAX stood at $2.5 million. An expert said, It's the largest size diamond that you could wear every day. However, a month hadn't gone by before it was reported that Rupert and Smith weren't headed for the altar after all. The pair had allegedly called off their nuptials due to differences in religious opinions, per a source cited by Vanity Fair. Ain't love grand. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.